you on television now. Congratulations. Oh, my God. I can help you. I can help you. And I'm not telling you, me. I'm not on a summer evening in a cavern hotel, not long after the Disclosures Tribunal began its hearings, the McCabe family gathered to celebrate the 90th birthday of Morris's father, Michael. I said to, to your wife, all the days that I brought Morris McCabe from school in an air white boat. That's right, that's right. <gasps> and, and all the dinners. Proudly on dead so oh, have to take it. such shite. Yeah, but, sure, at, but least you know what? Really over. at least you have a backbone that you can do it. Good afternoon, each and every one of you. You're in some way very special to the McCabe family. So uh, you've got all more than welcome here tonight. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Do you think that we'll be home before the night? Ah, you've been so long in Scotland that you couldn't say it for certain. Still, you might now, might and so you might. In some ways, the path taken by Maurice McCabe is history repeating itself. Because this isn't the first time that a McCabe has taken a public stand, which pitted him against many in his own community. Sheelin trout might not be the biggest in the world, but you won't find finer sport or prettier fish anywhere. In Ireland, Happiness is fishing. What we built the hotel for originally was for fishermen, and they were all foreigners. In the lake, as most lakes are, are genteel. You could see right down maybe 20, 30 feet, full of fish, a sheen and trout, which is pink like salmon. It was very, very special. The first 10 years were open. We couldn't even take weddings. The hotel was full, all of them. But uh, unfortunately, 10 years after opening it, that came to a sudden halt. The fishermen that was out on the lake said, be careful, there's something going on in the lake. They used to see a scum on the top of the water as a result of 50 piggeries being allowed to be built around the shore of Loch Sheelan. Imagine 50 piggeries. Thousands and thousands of gallons of effluent have choked the rivers into the lake and deprived fish of oxygen. And this latest incident... It was unbelievable the damage that was done. And I was trying to keep the show on the road. And when people come to me and say, OK, you're advertising in Germany. Why didn't you tell us the condition of this lake? We can't fish this lake. We have to go home. The authorities don't seem to care anymore. They're talking about tourism. And here is the finest lake in Europe without any shadow of doubt. No one disputes that. And today, it's a cesspool. Pig slurry, it clings to your hair, it clings to your clothes. It's everywhere. And it's awful did destroy our business. And the more my father fought with them, the more slurry that would go into the lake. They did nasty things, you know, they did. They throw a dead pig at the front door of the hotel. Um, they'd spread slurry on the eve of a wedding, when the smell would be there for the wedding. I was worried, and my father was worried, but he wouldn't let it get to him. He would always fight back, always. So they stopped at nothing, they were ruthless. You might get a phone call in the middle of the night. Uh, when are you going to show up about the pigs? I said, 
Why do you ring me at this hour of the night? I'll meet you tomorrow someplace. But he wouldn't meet me tomorrow, you see. But uh, I was fairly tough now. I had to be. But... Uh... He would go all out to prove his case. And I suppose that happened to me. I wasn't conscious of it at the time. But looking back, it was identical. Michael would have always told Morris, don't give up, Morris. He'd say, don't let them beat you. And whereas I would have wanted Morris to stop and just get on with our lives and just leave it all alone. He was never going to let go, ever. And I think he got that from his father. It was a great night, you know. It's a completely different world, completely different world. But I hate come back Monday with a passion. Hate it. Back up to that, up the stairs, into the room, on the seat, listening to this hard evidence. Over a 12-month period, the Disclosures Tribunal would sit at Dublin Castle for 102 days. Morris and Lorraine McCabe made the journey from Cavan to Dublin to attend almost every sitting. Tribunal witnesses included senior politicians, Gardaí, journalists, social workers and civil servants. The picture that emerged over the months of public hearings was of a man who had paid a very heavy price for his dogged refusal to turn a blind eye to low standards. Sergeant Morris McCabe, would you be happy... Four years earlier, his appearance at the Public Accounts Committee on Penalty Points had put him under the spotlight. His issues in relation to penalty points were impacting on him doing his day-to-day -day duties in Mullingar. Um, as things progressed and his name became public, the remarks by the former commissioner that Morris's actions I, were I, disgusting. I, frankly, I think it's quite disgusting. It's, on a personal level, I think it's quite disgusting. After that, in the station, the, the atmosphere was, he's finished. I knew it, it was a complete sea change. They can believe Martin Callan and what he said. It's good enough for him and it's about time and he won't be making any more complaints. And they were the type of comments that were being said by some, not all, in the station. I'd park in my car in, in the backyard and people were parking an inch away from me. Um, I could hear the whistling. I, I felt I was poison. I wasn't welcomed anywhere. Away from Mullingar, Morris McCabe was now a high-profile national figure. Lorraine feared there would be repercussions. There was loads of times that I felt frightened. I was afraid, through the penalty point things, so that the house was going to be raided. I was afraid that they would do something to hurt him. I was afraid that they'd set him up for something. And when he would go out, and if he wouldn't answer the phone, I would be afraid that there was something wrong, something had happened to that. Like, he was under such pressure that did he snap her? In the public arena, McCabe's issues continued to dominate. Fianna Fáil leader Micheál Martin's interest was piqued, and he met with the sergeant. He then read a transcript of a conversation between Morris McCabe and the Garda Confidential recipient Oliver Connolly into the Dáil record. I'll tell you something, Morris, and this is just personal advice to you. If Shatter thinks you're screwing him, you're finished. Micheál Martin was able to quote Oliver Connolly's warning to McCabe at length because the sergeant had secretly taped their meeting. It would have immediate consequences for the confidential recipient. This is a very serious matter. Having been in, um, in contact with the Minister for Justice, who is very concerned about this, 
He has uh, this morning relieved Mr Connolly of his duties. Oliver Connolly, he put out a very dignified statement after that saying he felt he had been betrayed by you know, what, what you did in relation to putting that tape into the public domain. Yeah, I heard that. But if you look at my angle, I am a member from Gertrude Connolly. If I, I didn't report this, I mean, I was leaving other whistleblowers open to the same treatment. And I felt I had to say, hold on, this system is not working. Aspects of the Alan Shatter denied that this represented his position. But I'd make it absolutely clear, there's no one would have my approval or imprimatur, be it a confidential recipient or anyone else to issue any threat to any individual who, in good faith, was reporting on any issue. When Sergeant McCabe went to meet Michal Martin, Lorraine advised him to raise other troubling issues. I think I said to him, bring him the Bailey stuff. As far as I was concerned, it was an awful lot more serious than the penalty points. Michal Martin said to me, have you anything that is more serious than the penalty points? And I said, yeah, well, I have, but they were all investigated and all said, you know, there's nothing to see here, move on. Well, he said, give me 10 as a, a sample. I compiled the 10 and I gave him the dossier. Um, this is the document. Which document? This is a document that was sent to the confidential recipient. He's holding up the dossier, saying, you know, this is awful stuff. This document is a document, it's a complaint about very serious matters, contains very serious issues. In fairness to the Taoiseach, Mr Kenny, he took it serious as well. I received uh, documentation uh, containing extremely serious allegations of Garda misconduct. And the allegations contained therein uh, are very grave. And it was just, it was a massive change for us. Thank you, Taoiseach. Like, to, to have the Taoiseach saying that he was going to investigate. The Morris had gone three years of being rubbish by the guards, and then you'd somebody take, you know, believing in him and taking it to the highest level. Mr. Sean Guerin, SC. The government asked Barrister Sean Guerin to examine Morris McCabe's allegations, and a senior member of government made a significant intervention. I want to thank Sergeant McCabe and Mr. Wilson for their service. There have been many words to use to describe their actions in recent months, but if I was to use one word, the word I would use is distinguished. Distinguished. Um, that was great. That was a great feeling. For Commissioner Callanan, this was the beginning of the end. After the backlash against his use of the word disgusting at the Public Accounts Committee, further controversies engulfed the justice system. Points, the alleged surveillance of the GSOC offices. Where does that leave the Garda Commissioner? GSOC about the recording and retention of telephone calls in Garda stations all over the country. Within the past few minutes, the Garda Commissioner, Martin Callanan, has announced his resignation with immediate effect. The independent TD caretaker... I was as shocked as everyone else. It was just, just a life changer. That was a good day. Just weeks later, on the eve of the publication of the Guerin Report, there was a political bombshell. The Minister for Justice, Alan Shatter, has resigned from the government. The told the Though Lord he would ultimately be found to have taken the whistleblowers very seriously and would later win a court ruling that the Guerin report had been unfair to him, at that time, Alan Shatter's resignation came as a relief to the McCabe's. I never expected him to go. Where did he go? The next day, the Gairn report into Maurice McCabe's allegations of Gartha malpractice in Baileyborough was published. It found McCabe's claims weren't investigated properly by Gartha and that he had suffered for his actions. It was very good for me, it was, yeah. And I, d I didn't expect this. It was a massive sense of, um, of Maurice just being vindicated. And that you check yourself and you think, God, this is, I can't be feeling happy. After Martin Callanan retired, Noreen O'Sullivan was appointed to the role of acting guard the commissioner, and she wasted no time in publicly expressing support for whistleblowers. 
if somebody has something to say and if somebody wants to bring something to our attention, they may not always be right, but sometimes what they see and what they identify can act as a catalyst for continuous improvement. She appointed me to the professional standards unit in relation to showing them the penalty points issues and how I detected them. And it was the first time that anyone gave me recognition in what I, I was reporting within the guards. Our winners of the People of the Year Award, Sergeant Morris McCabe and John Wilson. And later that year, Morris McCabe and John Wilson were honoured for their work on penalty points. Only for my family, I don't think I would have went through this. Um, they were with me all along. It was Lorraine and the five kids, and especially my father. I'm sure he's very, very proud of yeah, yes. you. I was released from jail. I was free. Nothing more nasty would happen to me. Oh, look, God, little did I know it was going to be worse. The Gairn report had recommended the establishment of a full commission of investigation to look into McCabe's claims of Gartha malpractice in Baileyborough. This private commission was chaired by Mr. Justice Kevin O'Higgins and began hearing evidence in May 2015. I was looking forward to the O'Higgins Commission. I, I wasn't worried at all. Morris absolutely believed that the O'Higgins Commission was just going to be the last part of it. It was going to end it all. But on the second day of the private hearings, Morris McCabe was stunned to hear that his own motivation and credibility were being challenged. And Michael McDool, he was my senior counsel, he fought back. He said, this is shocking stuff, this, this can't go on. Who are you doing this and on whose instructions? And the Garda barrister came back and said that it was on Commissioner Norwin O'Sullivan's instructions. The Garda legal team at the O'Higgins Commission were briefed by senior officers. They told the legal team that they believed McCabe's complaints were sparked by his unhappiness at how he was treated by Garda management after the Miss D investigation eight years previously. Although he had been cleared, the legal team were told that this had changed him and he became disaffected and that this was at the root of his subsequent complaints. The Disclosures Tribunal would accept that it was the Commissioner's responsibility to have Maurice McCabe's evidence scrutinised. However, a series of mistakes in a document setting out the case for challenging McCabe's motivation would lead to an incorrect allegation being put to him. When I was in the witness box, they asked me did I remember a meeting in August 2008 in Mullingar. And I said, yeah, I did. And they said that it would be introduced in evidence that I had made this statement at the meeting in relation to motivation, and I denied it. When the hearing had finished, Morris McCabe realised he could prove that this allegation was untrue. When I, I read the document, I realised, hold on, hold on, you know, I realised, I, I recorded this meeting, but I didn't know where the phone was. I searched for my phone, searched, searched, and I found it in the attic and I found the recording on the phone and it backed up what I was saying. The tape was submitted as evidence and the matter was dropped. It would later emerge that the Garda legal team had submitted a report of the meeting in Mullingar to the O'Higgins Commission, which matched McCabe's recording. The Disclosures Tribunal would find that this entire episode was simply a misunderstanding it found that the officers at the Mullingar meeting had behaved entirely properly and that there was never a plan by anyone to introduce false evidence about this to discredit McCabe at the O'Higgins Commission. Well, I accept that now, but at the time it was a lonely place. Everything was thrown at me that I had an improper motive. And nobody came to me and said, oh, sorry, Morris. What was I to think? At the Disclosures Tribunal, it was acknowledged that Maurice McCabe should have been apologised to for this incident when it became clear that it was an error. The entire experience of the O'Higgins Commission had a devastating impact on Maurice McCabe. Above all the things that has happened to Maurice, this has been the most damaging. 
this drive the other day. And he said, um, that's the tree I was going to hang myself on. But that's how real it all was. This morning, a commission of investigation has highlighted serious flaws and failures in criminal investigations in the Cavan Monaghan Gartha division, but has found no evidence of corruption. The Before the O'Higgins report was published, it was leaked. The report, which has been seen by RT News, has a I heard it on the first time on More in Ireland. The commission found that Sergeant McCabe acted out of genuine and legitimate concerns. It upheld some of his complaints, but found others were, quote, inaccurate, incorrect, overstated and unfounded. There were problems it was desperate. Management and child and I found out the Department of Justice. I don't remember who I spoke to, but I just told her. We had seen the report and we felt it wasn't fair on us. I said, would you please publish it? No evidence of God the corruption is being studied. While this was Morris and Lorraine's view at the time, the tribunal would later find that these broadcasts were not influenced by anyone in Garda headquarters and that the journalist Paul Reynolds was honest and independent and that he was entitled to take this view of the report. The Minister for Justice today published the report... The O'Higgins Commission report was published the following day. None of the allegations of corruption against senior officers were upheld, but it did uphold Maurice McCabe's complaints about poor policing and said he had performed a genuine public service at considerable personal cost. I accept the O'Higgins report. All my incidents were upheld in relation to poor policing in Bailiebor, every one of them. It, but it, it said then that I, I was prone to exaggeration. That was only in relation to minor details. But I was happy. And then, I heard about Dave Taylor. In late 2016, the former head of the Garda Press Office, Superintendent Dave Taylor, was out in the cold. Having once enjoyed a high-profile position with the ear of former Garda Commissioner Callanan, he was moved to the Traffic Division shortly after Noreen O'Sullivan took the helm. He'd been investigated for leaking sensitive information to journalists in an unrelated case and was suspended from the force. At a meeting in his home, he told Maurice McCabe an extraordinary tale. He told me that he, he destroyed me and that he was ordered to do it. Martin Callan ordered him to do this. And he told me that Martin Callan compiled text messages and sent them to him and he would send them on then to journalists. He told me that the text messages were vile in relation to sexual offences. After the meeting, Maurice McCabe decided to submit a protected disclosure. This is a mechanism to allow Garthi to confidentially disclose wrongdoing. Dave Taylor did the same. As a result, the government moved to set up a commission of investigation to be held in private. But before this could get underway, there was another issue looming. It had started with a registered letter. And it was a letter from Tusla accusing me of raping a child. In January 2016, Morris McCabe received a disturbing letter. I opened the letter and I just looked at it on the phone, Morris, and I said, does it ever end? And there was a letter from the two sir, accusing me of raping a child. This letter said the rape accusation had come from Miss D, the girl who had previously accused Sergeant McCabe of sexual assault. Miss D had gone to counselling in 2013 and when her counsellor wrote up her case, the original allegation was elevated to child rape. This false allegation was on file in Tusla for two and a half years by the time Maurice McCabe was alerted to it. This was an allegation of child rape that lay in a file for years and years. And who saw it, who opened it, who, who typed out the letter that we got? 
Is it somebody that I know? Did they go home and say it to their parents or their husband or their wife? Or... It had to have been widespread. It took the agency another six months to admit it had made a mistake and that Miss D had never made a rape allegation. He demanded to see his entire file. I got that file from Tusa in January of 17. It was about 110 pages. I was being accused of raping a child twice. Our children were inputted on files saying that I was a threat to them. That's what I find hardest to deal with even now is the fact that there was files opened up in four of the children and that I didn't know it. We decided then to go public and I went to prime time. Tonight, prime time will reveal for the first time the details of the extraordinary sequence of errors that left the entirely innocent guard, the whistleblower, fighting for his good name. Oh, I will never forget sitting down to watch prime time here that night. I was sick, absolutely sick. Loren said, if we don't sort this out now, she said, something could come back in 20 years' time, 30 years' time, and none of us are here to say to the kids, you know, that's not true, that didn't happen. That's why they did it. Had changed. According to this councillor's report, the alleged abuse involved digital penetration, both vaginal and anal. Within we watched it, myself and Lorraine, in our front sitting room that night on our own. And we were nervous of it. The primetime report rocked the political system. The government had just announced a new commission of investigation into the alleged Garda smear campaign against Maurice McCabe. But the revelation that Tusla held files on the country's most high profile whistleblower was a game changer. When the Tusla thing came out, that was it. We weren't going to any private commission of investigation. No way. We wanted it public. Pressure came on the government to hold a full public tribunal. The announcement of a public tribunal. After seven days of political turmoil, the government established a tribunal of inquiry to be chaired by the Supreme Court judge Peter Charlton. It would examine an extraordinary allegation. Could the agencies of the state have conspired to do down a whistleblower? These are all the questions that we want to ask of all the witnesses. It's a big day, it's Monday. It's the day before the Charlton investigation uh, starting. We're looking forward to going, I'm looking forward to going, because there's a lot of answers we haven't got yet. And we want to know why did it, why did it this to us and our family? The tribunal's first task was to unravel how Morris McCabe came to be falsely accused of child rape. Among the first witnesses was a psychologist who said that after a counselling session with Miss D, that she had accidentally inserted a child rape allegation from a different file into her report. The tribunal examining allegations of a senior guard that smear campaign it wasn't entirely wiped through the system. And the tribunal is Over several days in July, Morris and Lorraine McCabe heard how this devastating false allegation was handled by a series of social workers before being eventually referred to the Gardaí. Everybody in HSE and Tusla that had their hands on this, everybody made mistakes. They're all, all blaming each other and saying, I don't remember this, I don't remember that. The barrister said that none of the mistakes were in Morris's benefit. Everything was in your detriment. Yeah. After four weeks of hearings, the Disclosures Tribunal finished the Tusla module at the end of July. 
thank God it's the last day. I'm, I, I'm physically better. There are more modules coming in the, in the winter, but I just hope the judge is able to get through the evidence and explain to everybody why it happened. But I couldn't, I couldn't put down to anything at the moment. In September, there was an unexpected development. The Minister for Justice revealed he had been notified by Noreen O'Sullivan of her intention to retire. Noreen O'Sullivan's term as Guard the Commissioner ended as it began in controversy. And later that autumn, Maurice McCabe found himself at the centre of another political storm. This involved Thornish de Francis Fitzgerald, but related to her time as Minister for Justice, when the credibility of Sergeant McCabe was being challenged at the O'Higgins Commission. Uh, she confirmed to me that she had no hand, act or part uh, in forming the former commissioner's uh, legal strategy, uh, nor did she have any prior knowledge of the legal strategy that the former commissioner's team uh, pursued. Uh, she did find out about it after the fact, uh, but around the time it was in the public domain when everyone else knew about it as well. Days later, emails emerged which revealed the minister had in fact been told about a dispute over the Garda Commissioner's legal strategy at the O'Higgins Commission at the time. The political fallout would bring the country to the brink of a general election. Critically, the, the email states an allegation of serious criminal complaint had been made against Sergeant Morris McGee. This can be resolved if the tone is to step aside. The Thornish to Frances Fitzgerald has resigned. She had faced a barrage of criticism Jeez, that's over amazing. her handling of the Gordon. I probably my father because he's fallen a big time. Yeah, well, it was inevitable, uh, Sean. Uh, it doesn't give me any pleasure. Um, you yeah, heard, did you? Revelation, resigned. Revelation it's on the news there, on Sean O'Rourke. Bye. Uh, it's kind of surreal, isn't it? You're, like, you're, like, you're in the eye of the storm, but you have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Is she, is she resigning completely or will she still be a TD? Oh, she'll still be a TD. Minnie, are you sad? Are you sad? Are oh, you going to lie over? Oh, my God. What is wrong with you? Drama about the Thornish to her knowledge of the McCabe affair. Dominica, R R2-1 now, a special programme. Bye. She's gone. Yeah, she resigned. Bye. Bye. Specifically, that there was nothing she could do about it anyway. So it was, you know, that, that was her, that was the new defence. We expect all of those questions, pre presumably, to be teased out in be. January mm. by Mr Justice yeah. uh, Peter Charlton. And if there was one thing that united almost everyone here in the last period, it was that desire that there shouldn't be an election before Christmas. The last thing we want is an election. I'm here in the middle of it. Just want it all to end. Well, that's bad. And ring you back. Bye. A journalist looking for me to make a comment, but apart from I'm still serving as a guard, I you wouldn't do it, involved, you know, yeah. because um, it's, it's not my right to do it, you know. We don't want this. We don't want to be centre stage of papers and newspapers and all that. Just we want, to, want this to finish. And as soon as the Charlton Inquiry um, wraps up, hopefully we'll be able to just have no more calls. Pun into the whole lot, yeah. I love the breaks. I love the weeks off and the days. No. And Tom, the other thing is to check the days. Is it right? Is it 12 days? I don't know. I think above all of them, Tom, it probably has had the most impact, but I don't think it's net negative. He doesn't know the depth or anything like that, but he would watch the news. The first thing he'd say, is he on daddy's side? And he'd say, is he good or is he bad? Or, like they were playing the Wii and he had politicians as the characters on, on the Wii game. Who made that? Well, I think that came out of Brownies. That's his personality, he's inquisitive. And Tom's proud, you know, he's delighted with Morris.
It's the 7th of January today and we are due back tomorrow morning in Dublin Castle at 10 o'clock. Um, it's six months since we have been there. Um, we are not particularly looking forward to it. It's hard to go back actually after six months. I see the former Garda Commissioner, she's up to give evidence and um, she's in for two days so it'll be interesting what she says. The Disclosures Tribunal resumes public sittings at Dublin Castle today. The latest module getting underway this morning will examine if former Garda Commissioner Noreen O'Sullivan... The question of whether the former Commissioner Noreen O'Sullivan had used unjustified grounds to discredit Morris McCabe at the O'Higgins Commission was one of the key modules at the Disclosures Tribunal. Noreen O'Sullivan told the Tribunal that she had always fully supported Morris McCabe, but she said she was faced with an impossible dilemma she had to test the credibility of his evidence because she also had a duty of care to all Garda members. Before the proceedings got underway, she approached the McCabe's. She came up to us, shook her hands, and asked about our families and how are we getting on up here, she asked. So we're getting on fine. I'm surprised she did, but I mean, I wasn't going to not shake hands with her. Has Noreen O'Sullivan ever contacted you since this issue that we're now looking at here Never. in the module? So since y you were accused in that module so of mo being badly motivated, you've had no no communication no. with Noreen O'Sullivan? Never. But she loves me. It's great to hear the Commissioner come and say those lovely things about Morris and that he was, everything he was doing was in good faith, not bad faith. But how did it all go so badly wrong? A status orange snow ice alert remains in place in County's Cavan, Monaghan, Cork, Tipperary and Waterford. The Sergeant Morris McCabe is due to give evidence at the Disclosures Tribunal today. Yeah, well, I'll be there in ten minutes, five minutes. OK, bye-bye. It's fairly nerve-wracking today, but it was even made more nerve-wracking that we got caught up in a traffic jam. Delayed us for about an hour. That's just him on the phone to say that he's sitting in a different place. He said it's fairly full. I don't know why we're so anxious, because you can only tell the truth, can't you? When asked to give an account of a conversation between John McGuinness and Martin Callanan, in which Callanan said McCabe had sexually abused his own children, Morris McCabe broke down in the witness box. I just couldn't say the words. I couldn't. Why? Just can't say them and that's it. You know, I'm not going to see them now either. It still obviously is very raw for you. Mm. Yeah, it is, yeah. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. John McGuinness gave his account of the meeting with Martin Callanan to the tribunal and a number of other high-profile witnesses also claimed to have been negatively briefed by the former commissioner about Sergeant McCabe. I think this module has been a kind of a turning point where we had the, like, the independent witnesses coming out and saying what they were told. And it was, I suppose, at times jaw-dropping. You just wonder why he did it, wouldn't you? You would just wonder why. The former commissioner spent three days in the witness box at the tribunal. He recalled speaking to each of the witnesses, but flatly denied that he had said what was alleged. Just before we broke up, Morris was up uh, talking to the legal team and he came down and he said, did you see that? And I said, see what? He said, he's at, he's at Martin Collins after shaking hands with me. And I said, I don't believe you did that. And he said, I didn't realise it. He kind of stuck his hand in in front of me and I didn't know whose hand I was shaking. Disgusted. To use his word, I was annoyed at myself. Because he was one person that I wouldn't shake hands with ever again. Former Garda Press Officer Superintendent Dave Taylor had told Morris McCabe that he had set out to destroy him by sending hundreds of vile text messages written by his boss, Martin Callanan. 
In the witness box, he changed his story. He now said there had been no texts. I think his credibility is questionable. But the tribunal ball it kept rolling and it unearthed an awful lot of stuff which we never knew about. So it was worthwhile. Superintendent Taylor gave the tribunal the names of nine journalists. He said he had negatively briefed about McCabe. The tribunal would find this list was a deliberate attempt to mislead it. However, it would find that he had negatively briefed three other journalists he hadn't initially identified to the tribunal and that it was probable that there were more. The tribunal finished its hearings in June of 2018, just under a year after it began, having heard from dozens of witnesses over 102 sittings and examined tens of thousands of documents. There was a couple of times I said, what the hell are we doing here? But look at it. It was very necessary. Yeah, it was necessary. It was necessary. I don't care what the report said that before. Yeah. I have. We needed it. I didn't do apprehensive leading up to the O'Higgins report, so I'm not going to do it in relation to this. I'm just going to wait and see what it'll be, will be. Mr Justice Charlton retired to write his report. It would be 100 days before Morris and Lorraine McCabe would hear his conclusions. From an early age, I was about 10, he was 14, we used to go out uh, on the lake. The lake was just like our back garden, the river. Hey, all right, Tom. He was my older brother, he looked out for me, and I looked out for him, so. And you know something? Mm. I missed all this through the years, all because I was wrapped up in this crack, you know? It's good to be back out. It is good to be back out, yeah. Yeah. And well, you haven't lost your touch with the road. You're not too bad for having have been around for a while. In fairness to Daddy, he pulled up a fair fight, didn't he? He did pull up a fair fight. At his age, he's delighted that the fish are back in Sheila. Hey, Tom, have that net ready. You never know. Fish, Tom. My father rang me Friday, he heard that the report was out, so I told him there wasn't that. But, uh, you know, he's as anxious as we are, you know? It'll take you a full day to read it. And what? Well, look at that. There. That's powerful there, isn't it? Think about it now, could you? Mm, very good, mm. isn't it? Well, well, are you happy now? Oh, you never was happier in my life. I thought the big thing. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's unreal, man. Yeah, it's incredible. Oh, God, I guess it's unreal. Oh, that's good. I hope to I'm keep... I'm not the yeah. All right, OK. Lovely. Yeah. Bye. What I like about today is this. It's all fucking over. It's all over. Do you know what's happening now? This report. The report comes out and said that you're the best football in the country. No? The report made devastating findings against the man who had been entrusted with the most senior position in policing in the state, Martin Callanan. The tribunal rejected much of the evidence he gave under oath and found that he had launched a frontal attack on Maurice McCabe as part of a campaign of calumny against the whistleblower. The report found that TD John McGuinness had been telling the truth. John McGuinness? Hello. I'm going to make it down the hall. John? Hi. Well, only for you. Oh, John, he made a fantastic job of me. I just wanted to ring you and thank you. Nice to you. You're welcome. 
He accepted your evidence, Seamus McCarthy's evidence, and he destroyed Martin Callan and Taylor. The report was also scathing about the role played by the one-time high-profile Garda press officer, Superintendent Dave Taylor. The judge said his credibility was completely undermined by his own bitterness. He said his evidence was improbable and plainly deceitful. He had completely understated his own involvement in the campaign against Maurice McCabe. Alison. Alison. How are you? The report is out today. Hey. The good news is we've been cleared. It's all good. It is absolutely fab. It is. OK? Fabulous for us and for you as well. Mr Justice Peter Charlton's report finds that former Commissioner Martin Callanan went on a frontal attack denigrating the character of Sergeant McCabe. The report finds Sergeant McCabe is an officer of exemplary character and a person of admirable fortitude. Minnie. Minnie. Quick, girl. Minnie. That should have the end of any allegation that Boris McCabe had ever sexually assaulted a child. The tribunal finds the false allegation was given an afterlife within Tusla, not due to any action by Gardaí, but because of the astounding inefficiency of that organisation. The tribunal report castigated the Child and Family Agency, Tusla. But while Justice Charlton was critical of how some senior Gardaí dealt with the false rape allegation, he ruled out a conspiracy saying this was one of the most unlikely coincidences ever to be accepted by any judicial tribunal. The report found that there was no credible evidence that Noreen O'Sullivan played any hand, act or part in any campaign conducted by Commissioner Callanan and by Superintendent Taylor. But the tribunal found her evidence that she wasn't aware of Martin Callanan's views on Maurice McCabe was improbable and disappointing. The report also stated that the former minister, Francis Fitzgerald, acted appropriately. The tribunal accepted that Francis Fitzgerald's evidence was an honest appraisal of the situation. It was not a lazy dodging of issues, but rather a considered response to the information. At the beginning of September, a new Garda commissioner, Drew Harris, was appointed to lead the force. Two weeks after the tribunal report was published, the commissioner travelled to Mount Nugent to meet Morris and Lorraine in their home. He was down here for an hour and a half. He's seriously interested in getting, getting the guards back on track, and I believe he will. And yeah. he was very apologetic, and he told Morris that he had changed policing. Yeah. He said single-handedly, he said, you've done it, he said, whether you realise it or you don't. And that was nice coming from him. On October 31st, 2018, Morris McCabe retired from Angarda Shikona. Like, it, it will change eventually, but I don't think I've, I'd, I'd feel safe and come back into a job that hasn't changed yet. I think for my health sake, uh, my well-being, that I'm better gone. I don't want to share all the dark times that have happened over the past 10 years, but they were really dark. Really. He could have been ruined. So I suppose to, to not have given up and to, like, I don't know, still be emotionally stable after all that, it's an achievement. Sorry, Daddy. I didn't like going out anywhere. I'd wear the hoodie if I was going anywhere. I just, I didn't like going out. But I can go anywhere now. I can. Anywhere. She's trying to lick it, but she can't reach. Mm -hmm. uh, last Sunday was the biggest marker for me because Morris went to a football match. And I just think that speaks volumes. He never, ever would have done anything like that. And that was the first match in 10 years. And I missed all those football matches. But I really enjoyed this other one now. I think the most important thing, the luckiest thing that really got us through this was my wife, Lorraine. And you know, people are saying, 
how did you stick it together? Well, we did. And then people were saying, you're a great Morris, but I wasn't a good one. It, it was Lorraine was the good one, with the kids. She did all that. I did nothing. The report has just, has just put Morris in a place where nobody can ever criticise him again, and for me, that's enough. I'm not looking back. No way am I looking back. No way. No. It's not late yet for the kids either. You're saying there's, there's still time to make up? Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. But I will make it up soon. Right, wait, you have to get an extra shot, you know? Shit, I already have a bit. Your choice.